Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. Welcome to How We Grow, the vacation rental show. I am so excited today to bring to you Rachel Gainsbrew. She is the founder and on-air talent of a of short-term gyms. And she has a lot of experience, guys. Here's why she's on the show. She's on the show because she has a lot of experience, guys, in luxury rentals, a lot of experience in how to make more money with less rentals. And that's really what I'm very excited to talk to you about today, Rachel. Thank you for being on the show. Linnell, thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate the content that you're putting out there for us who are in the field. So I know it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, but so appreciate all that you're putting out there. Well, I'm really excited to have you and learn a little bit too. Let's talk a bit about what your passion is. Tell me what your passion is and what short-term gyms is so that everybody will know. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a healthcare background. I come from formal training as a pharmacist. Burnout was real, <laughs> like many medical professionals, right? Yeah. yeah and right. so I was I really was looking for a way, Linnell, to not exchange my hours for dollars. And so one thing that I thought I understood pretty well was real estate. I mean, there's so many different investing strategies out there. So when we started to do some research after paying off mountains of student loans, we thought to ourselves, well, what's the next step? Because again, we had worked our fingers to the bone, like picking up so many shifts at work. And so the less is more strategy. I implement that in so many areas of my life. I'm looking for margin, you know, and yeah. all of the pillars. And so the reason we um, decided to go into short-term rentals specifically is because I identify that if you can set up a property in a luxury manner, and mm -hmm. if it's positioned correctly, if it's in, you know, location does matter some, but not, it's not the end all be all, but you have an opportunity, especially with short-term rentals and midterm rentals to reposition that property in such a way that you can drive the revenue with some, you know, key core metrics. And we did that with our first property. We did that with our second property. Wow. And at that point, we actually got contacted by Netflix and AirDNA for a TV show. And that's how we ended up on TV. I mean, coming from a pharmacy background, I never envisioned myself on TV. I, I have no formal media or marketing skill set, but just seeing the numbers on the back end they were really intrigued. They asked us for a casting call and just, we continued to move through the process. And it's just been absolutely amazing since. And uh, many members of our community, healthcare professionals, my husband was a psychotherapist by training. They just wanted to know, well, how is it that you're able to accomplish so much in such a short period of time with just a couple of properties that you started with? We've grown since then. But, you know, just getting the question over and over again, I realized that I do have a knack for spreadsheets and <laughs> leveraging spreadsheets and formulas and spreadsheets to evaluate property, complete my performa, um, kind of purchase it ahead of time on paper just to see how it's going to shake out and make decisions based on the data that like, that's my specialty. I absolutely love that. And that's how really short-term gyms was birthed, just sharing my spreadsheets with other uh, members in our community and um, then creating an education platform as well for other busy professionals, medical professionals specifically, who were burnt out and looking for a strategy to cut back on the W-2 and start living a life that you yeah. didn't necessarily yeah. need a vacation from. Well, and I've listened to you. You're actually you're actually brilliant. You you're you're very very smart. You have the ability to to gain knowledge and hold it, which is really cool. One of the things I wanted to ask you so that we could talk to our viewers about it because we're all about how to scale. And part of that is not growing fast. Part of that is growing smart. So, tell me what the key components are to those out there that actually want to buy their own homes, doesn't matter if you're in property management or not, for those that want to buy their own homes, 
tell me a little bit about your advice on how to pick a rental that's going to make a bunch of money. <laughs> oh, I love that. And so what I think the the secret sauce, for uh, especially for those who are in property manager who are leveraging um, that skill set to understand the entire client journey, you're more than halfway there. That's something that I think a lot of people do not talk about in the investment world, right? Getting the property is just like a one day affair eventually, but maintaining the property, knowing when the property is stale and it needs to be refreshed, knowing uh, how to collect data from the guests because they ultimately are our eyes and there are our ears at the property. So that part <laughs> is where I see the biggest struggle occurring. But overall, um, when it comes to looking for a property, the data is out there and it's been great. I use a number of actual data tools such as Price Labs, uh, AirDNA, Data Rabu, and what it does for me, it gives me both historical data, like what's happened in the past, as well as prospective data, what's happening in the future, like what's, you know, how are bookings looking for the next 90 days, six months. And that just those two things right there start to inform uh, my investment strategy. At that point, I look at, you know, what do I have in terms of cash for my down payment? You know, do I have $10,000? Do I have an old IRA that's sitting there? Does my husband have an old IRA that I can tap into or a 401k? And coming up with that down payment and then leveraging a strategy for me, uh, it was a 10% down strategy is how I started. So for example, a you know $300,000 home in a suburban area, that would be 30% down. Uh, I personally liked to put as little down as possible so that I can hold on to as much cash as possible because once you launch, you're going to need some things, but that's not going to be the best strategy for everyone. So definitely <laughs> consult with well, your finance. Well, that's people. the strategy they teach in, uh, in the real estate courses that uh, I'm a real estate broker as well. And that is exactly the strategy that they teach. I've got a new class coming up on Tuesday. I'm actually excited to attend about Ooh. investing to see if they have any new formulas for me. I too love a spreadsheet. Yeah. Let's talk about this. So mm -hmm. what are your strategies for making more money? Because I think any property manager wants to make more money out of a home. So uh, what is your strategy for making more money with less properties? Absolutely. So I want to look at as I'm approaching a, a specific market, I want to look at the differences, for instance, in a bedroom count, right? So a three bedroom versus a four bedroom versus a five bedroom versus a six bedroom. Well, how different are those in terms of the uh, possibility of the amount of revenue that I can generate? So that's what I want to know. Is it worth it for me to invest an extra $40,000 to go up a bedroom size or $100,000 to go up one or two bedroom size? For so the return the, on investment. The, for the return on investment, right? Mm -hmm. So that decision is made up front even before you purchase and you put, you know, you open your wallet, you want to know what that is. So that's one way that I take a look at, you know, what is the differences between the bedroom size? The second thing I look at is something called forced appreciation. I like buying properties that need something, right? So if you're going to buy a brand new construction, you're going to be paying for it, right? But right. A little bit of car, you know, carpet needs to be removed and I want to change it to hard flooring, whether it's luxury vinyl plank, depending on the market or tile, if, if it needs pain, you know, just leveraging those negotiation factors, you know, to try to talk the price down a little bit. And some people may call it the burst strategy, but I'm always looking for a property that needs something. Um, I'm not looking to do any major rehab or renovation, but property that's a little dated, I'm here for it, then we can haggle a little bit and I can offer something lower because I have resources and contractors that I work with that I continue to work with that give me really great deals on, you know, some renovations. The other thing is I, I actually leverage advanced tax strategies and that's worked to my benefit. So these past couple of years, there's legislation that allows us to leverage bonus depreciation. So we accelerate all of the depreciation, 30 years worth, <laughs> to, you know, 100%. We can accelerate it in 2022. 2023, we can accelerate only 80%. And then you just have to kind of uh, leverage the 20% down the line. 
and next year it's 60%. And so I'm not a tax accountant, but all I know is instead of me owing on taxes like we used to, we now are able to either get a refund or just be really, really close to break even, which is amazing. And so that allows me to have more cash in hand so that I can invest in other property. Other things that I look at, of course, is I'm looking for properties that are near multi-million dollar properties, although I'm not buying multi-million dollar properties at this stage, but I want properties that are within a, a vicinity of those properties. So one of the things that I do is I actually find the top performing properties. Uh, that's how we were able to find our Rosemary Beach a lot. I love so Rosemary Beach. <laughs> Just saying that itself. Rosemary Beach is, they've got great properties there. It's a beautiful area. So yeah, tell me, absolutely. you found your Rosemary Beach property. Yeah. So of course the estimated projected revenue of Rosemary Beach was like 200,000, 400,000. I'm like, right. Great. These are $20 million homes. But if you open up the perimeter, you know, for the surge and you cap your, your max, right. And so I capped my max at 700,000. We we're able to find something for 562,000, not directly there, but a couple, you know, just like tier seven. No, I get <laughs> it. For the less, a couple of right? streets over. Yeah. Right. And so still the, the fact that Rosemary Beach is able to generate that amount of revenue, you can still uh, leverage at your, you won't make the 400,000 or, or, you know, 300,000, but we're generating a little bit over 180, 190,000. So that's, that's amazing. And so always looking for the top markets. I don't shy away from properties that are 20 million. So, okay, let me just be your neighbor and figure out how I can get in for under 700. Wow. And, and that's really the strategy that I leverage. Now that's phenomenal. I'm, I'm actually processing. So you bought a house for 700,000 or so, and you're generating 180, 90,000 guys. That's, you know, you guys are property managers. You know how much that is. That is a lot. So tell me okay. what your secrets are. Uh, to generating more revenue, is it the area that rev that normally uh, generates that revenue, or did you do something specific? How are you setting your rates? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's great about that too is you want to leverage um, dynamic pricing tools, right? You want to look right. at your market. It's not a set it and forget it. You know, I know no, that's I the old way of doing things. So you want to leverage dynamic pricing. I don't necessarily need our property to be hundred percent occupied, 99% occupied. I'm perfectly content with 65 to 70% occupied because the larger homes, they actually need a little bit of that TLC in between. So the downtime allows us to get that property up to standard. When I first started, one of the biggest mistakes that I was making was actually I'm wanting the 90% occupied and then you start to get customer complaints issuing refunds you know I should have just let it sit and <laughs> so yeah, I know. not lost money on there and so when we looked you know across a couple of years and identify well where's our most profitable occupancy rate it is at the 65 to 70 percent occupancy rate so please do not drive your prices like eighty dollars a night 150 dollars a night Okay. You know? So, so out to you guys who are dealing with your homeowners who are whining because you only have 65%, please listen to what Rachel is saying and get some of her information to hand over to your homeowners to say, Hey guys, this is the sweet spot where you need to go and uh, use some of that data for her dynamic pricing. We have a product uh, called insights. That's free to most of you guys as property managers. It will allow you to look at dynamic pricing and then, of course, we have RepMax, which will do the dynamic pricing for you, which is killer. So I love the dynamic pricing idea. I um, I use dynamic pricing uh, this year on some of my rentals. Uh, one of them, uh, we were we had a really bad leak, and it went off the market. And uh, we, when we pulled it off the market, because you couldn't stay there, guests could not stay there, it rented in between when we pulled it off and when we set the owner block on it or the maintenance block on it. And uh, it rented for $2,000 more that week than it was rented when we just pulled it off. So that dynamic pricing, I know it can go both ways, but it's listen to Rachel. She knows what she's talking about there. Okay. So you also manage properties. Um, this episode of How We Grow is sponsored by LSI Tools. With 22 customized tools designed for vacation property managers, LSI Tools is here to supplement your vacation rental software. 
our new LSI Rental Insights tool is perfect for easily searching through vast portfolios of guest information to change the way you do business. Visit us online at lsitools.com to learn more. As a property manager, uh, do you only take those properties that meet uh, certain criteria? I do. And so I have a property avatar, so to speak, properties that meet the criteria of what we already have been hosting because mm -hmm. uh, my helpers who come alongside me to make sure that we're doing well, well, we have our entire operating procedures set around this type of property. So imagine uh, we're hosting primarily four bedroom plus five bedroom. And all of a sudden imagine, you know, taking a, you know, a, a sky rise one bedroom condo for bachelors and bachelorettes. It's a whole different vibe. And so we want to kind of stick to what we know in terms of the, you know, the market, the marketplace, our avatar, which is multi-generational families traveling with children. And so, yeah, that's our secret sauce as well, because with those larger homes, we're able to leverage the fact that we may have three or four uh, paying. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that. so I got to ask you this. Uh, you need to go look in North Carolina. Do you have any on the North Carolina coast? I don't. Okay. You need to look in North Carolina. Come see okay. me afterwards. We'll talk about it. There's, there's <laughs> some very good places to invest there. Just saying. So right. a lot of people listen to my show that talk, and there are a lot, a lot of them are my friends that, well, I say friends, but I've been in this industry for 22 years. So a lot of them I know from trade shows and for people that work in the industry and may want to start their first vacation home. Let's talk about a little bit about that, because I think I, I have a lot of, a lot of people who want to get into it that talk to me about it. And uh, now my first vacation rental, I got it. Uh, I, like you, only want to put down as little as possible and keep my cash for the next vacation rental. And so I put down, uh, I put down 20% and it might got my loan at 2.5 or so, 2.52. And so the question I have to you is interest rates are no longer that, Rachel. So let's talk about strategies for holding your money and for making it still profitable. So are you buying today with the interest rates the way they are? Are you investing in your real estate uh, in new properties right now? Yeah, I, I actually am. And the reason for that is I still want to take advantage of my bonus depreciation. Accelerated those, depreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Those are um, benefits that are going to go away and phase out. As far as we know, things may change with legislation, but as far as we know, they're going to phase out. So looking at the numbers that way, I am better off taking advantage of that instead of sitting and getting taxed at, you know, the higher rate, I rather <laughs> get taxed at a lower rate for sure. So yes, I'm still buying. I don't love the interest rates, but just yesterday, one of the members of our community closed on a property with nearly 0% down. So thinking about that as well, it's like, oh my gosh. Well, so at that point, you can you can make their payment for a couple of years while you wait on that with that down payment you would have saved. How did she do that on a second home on an investment home? What kind of loan was that? Yeah, so I'm waiting to hear back from her for all the details, but it was a 30 um, year and Fixed. then a 10 year and she, and there was no prepayment penalty, which I love yeah. because you can definitely refinance it if it's not something that you, um, that's the most favorable. So I was shocked. I still, we're going to debrief on that because I hadn't seen anything like that ever. <laughs> no, I haven't either. I, but, but when you find it, my email address, you I got you, me. I got you. And she's an attorney. And so she went back and forth and back wow. and forth. Wow. So I was like, okay. I'm so excited. I was like, yeah, that's great. I love the fact that you put it out there in such a way that almost anyone can buy a vacation rental home. So yes. guys, there's really cool. There are cool tools out there to help you for that too. And I, it's just so, it's such a blessing. I have a friend who was a property manager mm -hmm. uh, for several properties, several very, very large property management companies. And he ended up buying his own vacation rental and starting his own company that way too. So I just am like, anybody can do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're very interested in it, I'd like you to share any tips or insights on interior design or decor for creating a luxurious and appealing environment 
for these short-term property rentals? What What's the best advice you can give us on that? Oh, what I love about luxury and short-term rentals is that it's not your grandmother's luxury. Like remember lifestyle of the rich and famous, where it's like all these gold yes. toilets. <laughs> yes. Who was it that had those? Some Jay-Z or some pop had gold toilets. He no longer had money though, but he went mm-hmm. bankrupt, whoever it was. I can't remember who it was. Gaudy as I'll get out. Yeah. No yes. one wants that. Yes. No, so no, we're not, we're not doing news. gold toilets. <laughs> Yeah, that's the good news. It does not have to break the bank. So modern luxury, the modern luxury traveler is looking to um, reconnect with those that they're traveling with in their party. They're looking to reconnect with nature. They want to live like a local. So when it comes to thinking about the design, how do you want to make them feel? You know, how do you want to make your guests feel? And and keeping that at the forefront of your mind uh, and knowing exactly who that guest avatar is, is going to be the biggest factor in creating a luxury design. And so, yes, there's price point, there's luxury, there's ultra luxury, there's that's involved too, but it's more, I would say the soft skills of the communication, you know, how's, how are the photos set up? How is the listing description, the copy? Are you speaking to them? Are you giving them that feeling that they're going to have a really soothing, relaxing, enjoyable stay? Are you providing them content information? What's available for them? right? Or are they guessing? Are they struggling for their lives trying to figure out, okay, how is this place even set up? I don't understand. Or are you providing all of those things for them, say in um, in a floor plan that is, you know, designed in such a way they know where grandma's going to sleep, where, you know, how the lay of the land is. And so I think that's first and foremost, just thinking about some of those soft skills, but of course, there are some tangible things as well. Uh, the king size bed is the default travel luxury bed. Uh, technology, the convenience of, say, you know, a keyless entry, having some, you know, high tech tools in the in the space, putting the kitchen together in a way that it feels completely fully stocked, so that they have all the quality cooking tools. Nice, hard uh, surface, natural surface, natural fiber linens, those are important as well. But as far as, you know, creating and curating a luxurious day, it's about convenience. It's about communication and connection with that guest in that party, really. Okay. So tell me about your uh, future goals, your future goals and aspirations for yourself, uh, for your luxury short-term rental business. Tell me what what you have there. What are your future goals and aspirations? Yeah. So we actually are tapping into one of our future goals right now. We are launching a fund where we're purchasing property with other medical professionals, other busy professionals and friends who really want to get into it, Linnell, but they just can't foresee the time capital, the commitment that is sure. Yeah, everyone was saying it's passive income. So I tried are to you doing it in stock? No, it's not passive income. It's <laughs> definitely not. Guys, just repeat that, Rachel. It's not it's passive income. No, there's a lot to do here. So are you selling stock that way? Are you purchasing it all as an LLC and then they have a portion? How are you doing that with friends? Yeah, so it's definitely under the SEC. I've got an attorney that's drawing up those papers. So like a, like a syndication. And so you would be a liquid for like five years. And then once we liquidate, uh, we already have a buyer who wants to, we haven't even purchased, but I have a buyer just based on the quality of the product that I've been able to put out. They said, okay, whatever you put together, we'll, we'll purchase it from you. So I, I'm super excited about that. I have people that tell me the same thing and I haven't decided what business model I want to use to get other people involved. There's one in Florida because you're, you're already there. There's a business model in Florida where uh, in one of my podcasts, one of the, if you look at it, you'll see that uh, there's a guy who's put together like a club and you can belong to the club. And it's kind of interesting the way his business model is. So you guys, there's a lot of different business models to do this. And Rachel, I don't know which one is going to be most successful. Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just going to have yeah. to try it out. You know, you yeah, can do it. Absolutely. Like there's an investment fund. There's all kinds of ways to do this. And believe it or not, that's one of the things I'm working on in my spare time is what's the best business model to do that. Because I love choosing properties just like you. I like to run my <laughs> spreadsheets and see where's going to, you know, where am I going to get the best thing for my buck? 
And a lot of times it's just prayer to tell you the truth where you find yes. the right house. Oh man. Just, yes. Oh, you're just absolutely saying. Right. Let me tell you the deals. And, and here's one thing about the members of my community. Lena, I pray to God that literally they find better deals than me. And when they do, I can just cry and they do. Yeah, they do. I'm like this deal right here. Oh my goodness. And so I'm just so grateful uh, because I, I want anyone and everyone in my circle, anyone who crossed my path, you know, to, to feel blessed and to generate blessings from that interaction. That is my goal. So I do pray that they get better deals than me. My husband says, you're happier for them than, than for yourself. I said, I you have that. everything you want when God, God has been really good and has blessed me too. So I can't, you know, I'm very happy for my friends. I have a friend who just got his first two rentals up and running and they're themed and they're in like oh. Cherry Grove, South Carolina. And he's so excited. He is so excited about it. And he's, he's making a lot of money. He's doing a really good job and he's going to do the same thing that you and I are talking about. He's going to get together and get a whole bunch of people and they will do investments. And oh. I think that today it's a really good thing. If you could have any piece of technology Ooh. Um, that's not out there. What piece of technology would you have today? This one, I think it's kind of out there, but it's an AI tool. Let's say it's an AI tool that can make me play tennis really well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so our new AI tools right now can take a look at what we're searching on and they can show <laughs> us like properties, less algorithms. They can also build off of us uh, if we, if there's ways that they can get data and, and build off of our guest and, and learn how to make us more money doing that. But tennis, not today. You can talk to <laughs> my friend, good. my friend, Susan, she's an excellent tennis player. She might okay. be able to give you some of my life. <laughs> you can go back and look at yourself, uh, 15 years ago. And I know you did come from, uh, the, the medical background, but if you could go back, what would you tell yourself? What advice would you give yourself looking back? I mean, you're really successful right now. You have a lot of people that listen to you. You have a lot of, you have like, when I went to look you up, like for this, there was like I, dozens of podcasts have had you and not only Netflix, but um, so looking back 15 years, what advice would you give yourself? It would probably be weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In the morning. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, my life 15 years ago is significantly different from today. Mm. And so just hearing those encouraging words, I probably would have breathed a little bit more at night, slept at night, not, you know, just toss and turn over all of the stressors <laughs> that we were encountering 15 oh, years ago. Sure. For sure. I would go back and tell myself too, you're going to make it. And guys, I will tell you anyone out there under, under a lot of financial strain, working mm -hmm. towards your goals, it will be better tomorrow. Tomorrow is a different day. Wake yeah. up and enjoy each one because we only have one of today. We only have one moment. So um, is there any other advice that you want to give people that are looking at short term rentals? Yeah. I mean, I love that you are talking to the audience who are interested and they're not quite, you know, pulling the trigger, but you're, you're in the right place. Linnell's got the information and the support. And if this is what you want to do, move forward. You got to start by starting. I think the day of analysis and paralysis, it, it just, we just need to move forward. We need to take action because there's nothing like action that's going to build confidence, whether it's analyzing property, figuring out one or two markets you're really interested in, just take those first action steps. And, and then along the way, you'll figure out, you know, what the next best move is. There you go. My husband's question when we first started, when we invested together was how much is the upkeep on that? I know how much you say we're going to make. I'm like, here's how much we're going to make, honey. He's like, how much is that going to cost me to make? Yeah. So, and I think that depends on the area, Rachel, is that what you found the area and the type of home that you purchase? Yeah, it for sure. It depends on the area. So um, some areas are going to have higher is what I call expense ratios than others. I know in Florida, who the mm -hmm. insurance versus insurance in Georgia or, or Tennessee or other areas, um, you know, the insurance can really make a difference. So you want to factor that in, right? So factor in all of the risk, plan for anywhere from 42% of what you think you're going to make to go into mm -hmm. 
upkeep at least 42%, you know, 42% to 50%. Um, and then if you end up having less go into upkeep, then you're, you're better off. But having that realistic uh, number is going to be a great way to inform you on what that investment strategy is going to look like. That's a great number, actually. I tell my husband, don't plan on making any money. We want to put everything aside for the first five years. And then after that, and uh, praise God, it's, Someone else is paying for it. we've been able to pull it out and we've paid. Now, guys, if you buy a house in Texas, I'm just telling you, they're on the, on the coast of Texas, the taxes, don't forget to look at your tax rate for that. Because that is like in North Carolina, the tax on my home is, it's in a very expensive home. And the taxes are only like $4,000. And the tax on my little home in Texas is over 10. And I'm like, and that's, so if you're going to go to, yeah, the taxes in Texas, you know, there's no state income tax. So take those kinds of things into consideration. Like Rachel says, uh, I just gave you an example of where it could be very expensive mistake not to do that. You'd find it in closing though. Just yeah. saying, when you closed on your house, you'd see that. All right. Well, thank you, Rachel, very much. You guys start Take Rachel's advice, get it started. If you have any questions, Rachel, can they reach out to you? Would you be happy to mentor some people to call in from the show? Absolutely. I would be more than happy to take Aww. you by the hand and walk you through. Uh, hey. You can find me on Short Term Gems. I'm on Instagram as short.term.gems. That's one of the best ways to find me. Perfect. Well, do you have a TikTok channel too? I do, but I don't quite. No. Come over to the dark side. I'm a TikTok <laughs> fanatic. Really? <laughs> yes, I Linnell, love. It. Okay, TikTok so is my favorite. From you, really? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, call me. We'll okay. Call me and we'll do it. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> we'll see you next week on How We Grow. This episode of How We Grow was brought to you by LSI Tools. To find out more about how LSI Tools can help to grow your vacation rental business, visit lsitools.com. Make sure to watch for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts or anywhere else podcasts are found and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.